Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Will Neville. I'm the program director of Camp Anoxit, and I wanted to share with you some important program updates that have changed since our April 15th meeting. So why are we here? Uh, the merit badge registration model that we discussed in the April 15th meeting is going to change. Um, obviously, this is our first year ever doing it this way. Um, however, we do expect this to be the last change, and we thank you for your patience and understanding on that. So we're going to go over what's changing and what's staying the same. We're going to do some language and terminology clarifications. And just for your information, an asterisk will indicate a change on these slides. So uh, language. A cohort will most typically, for about 85% of you, equal your unit. Uh, the maximum size of a cohort is approximately 20. However, that does include adults. That is not simply scouts. Um, note, if your unit is larger than 20 or approximately 20, you must split into two cohorts that may not intermingle or be within six feet of each other. Um, you know, 21, 22, those are okay numbers. Uh, but, you know, obviously, if you have a much larger troop, 30, 40 scouts, you're going to have to split into two cohorts. Uh, if you need any more guidance on that, please feel free to reach out. Uh, a sub-cohort, uh, three plus scouts, three or more scouts, who will all be taking the same badges together. Um, so this is about our weekly grid. This is the exact same one that we showed you a week ago. Nothing changing on this front. Um, obviously, we're going to retain our 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and 2 p.m. scheduled times. Then we will have our open programs um, and our evening activities as well. So nothing changed here. Uh, and then just so that you can see it, uh, this is basically how a day will run. Uh, colors in the morning, breakfast, then sessions in the morning, lunch, an hour of unit development time, another program session, and then open program, followed by colors, dinner, and more open program. Uh, all right, so pre-registration. This part's the same. Uh, on May 2nd, several forms will go out. Uh, a form for sub-cohorts to indicate interest in merit badges and patrol time. Uh, a form for cohorts to select some afternoon and evening activities. A form for lone scouts and a form for adult volunteer opportunities. And that part will actually go out a little bit later. Um, and as you'll notice, there's a couple of asterisks on this page. The first is that the adults are going out later. And then also there'll be two forms, not one, one for sub-cohorts of smaller scouts and one for the whole cohort indicating interest. Um, I might try to combine those forms for simplification for you all, um, but I'm still working on that. I will let you know when we email those forms if it'll be one or two. Um, so this is all new on the cohort form. It's going to be, or at least the cohort section of the single form, depending on how it uh, comes together. The cohort form will be general information, how many of you are there, um, how many youth, how many adults, as well as contact information in case we need to discuss any programs with you, et cetera, ages of the scouts so we can help with some um, age appropriate programming. Um, afternoon merit badge selection. So obviously we offer scheduled merit badges in the afternoon this time year instead of just allowing kids to show up we will schedule them per cohort. So if you, you know, let us know 14 of our 14 or maybe 16 of our 20 kids want to go to fingerprinting merit badge, we'll slot that in. And if those numbers end up being off week of, that's totally fine, we'll work with you. Um, it'll also include some afternoon program selection, um, such as motor, uh, taking out the tubes on the motorboat. But that's always been something scouts have had to sign up for. So that's not really a change. We're just doing it in advance this year. And like I said a moment ago, approximate head counts and other information. The sub cohort section of the form or form itself, depending on how it comes together, general information, ages of scouts, numbers of scouts, the names of those scouts, their morning and 2 p.m. merit badge selections, two alternate merit badge selections, I don't think we will ever have to use those alternate selections. Scouts should get the 9 a.m., the 10 a.m., and the 2 p.m. badges they select. 
Um, however, once again, this is our first year ever doing it this way. So we do want to know those alternative merit badge selections. Should we ever have to use them? It'll be a conversation with you all and with those scouts. It won't be a decision we make. Uh, we will make sure to include you in that. Um, and once again, we'll do everything possible to get them those top three choices like we have every year. Even if it means moving things around, um, having them take a badge during patrol time and moving their patrol time to 10 a.m., whatever it is, we're going to do it. Um, and also, finally, their patrol time interests. Um, they will, instead of the going up to an area director on the field day of, they'll fill out, these are the 10 we're interested in, and we will assign those to them, those five or six uh, patrol time things to them. Uh, the Lone Scout. This is no change from April 15th. Uh, the Lone Scout, who is it for? Um, single Scouts interested in Nova, COPE, and BSA Guard. Uh, scouts that aren't demographically aligned with most of the scouts in a unit, for example, a 17-year-old in a unit with only 11 to 13-year-olds, and that 17-year-old just needs, you know, communications, camping, and cooking to become eagle. Of course, we want to help accommodate that. So that's who the Lone Scout's for. Really, there shouldn't be more than one or two um, per unit. Uh, and if you need to discuss that with me, please feel free to reach out. Who is it not for? Uh, scouts that just aren't interested in sub-cohorting um, or, a, or a group of scouts or three or more who are going to the same program. So if you have three scouts doing NOVA or three scouts doing COPE, sign them up as a sub-cohort. Uh, the adult volunteer form, literally no change here. Um, I will send that out probably mid-May. Uh, but once again, none of these are due until 10 days before you have to come to camp. Uh, so it's about two Wednesdays before. Uh, bonuses for co for sub-cohorts, rather, not cohorts. Um, we will have a highly customized brown C because we will know in it well in advance who will be in the sessions because all of these forms will be due 10 days before camp rather than the day of camp. Um, and of course, they're still going to be able to do afternoon merit badges they didn't sign up for if our staffing allows. If, for example, they show up at Handicraft and they say, hey, can we didn't sign up, but we can, can we do fingerprinting? If the staff is available, the answer will always be yes. However, because we will be scheduling so many merit badges for so many cohorts and sub cohorts, it might not be possible. Uh, so know that if they want to guarantee an afternoon badge, they should really let us know in advance. Um, but once again, they show up Sunday and decide they want to do something, let us know. We will work with you and do whatever is possible to make that happen. Uh, logistics. So please sit outside uh, some time in a meeting after May 2nd for cohorts and sub cohorts to fill out an interest sheet. Um, only adults should fill out the online form. Cohorts and sub cohorts will get a worksheet they can fill out with either pen and paper or electronically if your meetings are remote. And once again, please submit these no later than the day of your pre camp meeting or 10 days in advance. Um, week one units, that's really uh, specifically for you because your pre camp meeting is three days prior, not 10 days prior. So 10 days prior is when we'd like to have all this by. So sub cohorts, this is really the different part. Um, in general, three plus scouts who must stick together for morning merit badges. We'll get into why they have to stick together in just a moment. Uh, sub cohorts can combine but not split. Once again, I'll show you some information about this momentarily. Um, and if just for to help us, if at all possible, if you could maximize, and once again, I'll sh show some visuals in a minute the number of scouts taking cooking merit badge at once, brown sea, or any waterfront and shooting sports badges. Um, for those classes, just to help us with distancing, um, eight is per session is ideal, but once again, we'll work with you. If you just have three, that's all you have, we'll make it work. Um, the reason that is because the ranges are 
obviously very small rifle range has eight shooting stations. And if we have groups of three, we have to leave a buffer station in between, uh, which just subtracts the number of scouts that we can have shooting at once. And at the waterfront, they won't be wearing masks. And if I can't, uh, it becomes difficult, I should say, for the guard and the instructor to watch so many uni- uh, sub cohorts that are spread out six feet apart from each other. Um, so why must they stick together? Let's use some visuals. Um, so this represents your unit. Uh, if you look right here, every letter is a scout, A scout, B scout, C scout, all the way through L. This is a unit of 12 scouts. And each color represents a sub cohort blue subcohort, the green, the orange, and the red. So this is them having signed up for swimming, rifle, climbing, cooking in the morning, chemistry, communications, first aid and music in the afternoon, or mid-morning, and model design, engineering, archery, and shotgun in the afternoon. So for example, say way too many subcohorts have signed up for swimming period A then all we have to do is make a nice easy switch where we move them to period B and switch their chemistry to period A. No harm, no foul, not a problem. So now let's look at what happens with that same problem with too many sub cohorts signing up for swimming in the morning if the scouts are allowed to move between sub cohorts. So here it is again. This is once again, your unit we have four sub cohorts of three scouts each for a total of 12 scouts. Um, and this is how they've, for in the morning, they're doing swimming, rifle, climbing, cooking. And then in 10 p.m. or 10 a.m. rather, Scout D decided he wanted to do chemistry with Scouts A and C when Scout B moved to music and so on and so forth. So they moved around within the sub cohorts, which is allowable because they're all in the same larger cohort. However, logistically, this presents a big problem. So let's look at the same problem. Say in swimming, too many units signed up for swimming period A. So we have to move this sub cohort of A, B, and C out of swimming period A. And so let's do it. Let's just see what happens. So we switched them to period B, right? But now we have a problem because now Scout B is signed up for both swimming and music and Scout D is signed up for both chemistry and rifle. And look, there's no Scout B in period A and there's no Scout D in period B. So that's our challenge. Uh, Obviously there are solutions. We could ask these scouts if they could uh, happily switch badges would, um, sorry, would Scout B be happy taking rifle in the morning? Maybe. Um, so that's where our challenge comes from. These scouts end up doubling up badges whereas, and they end up losing a badge. Uh, and we obviously can't just have scouts warning around with nothing to do during merit badge periods and we can't facilitate 12 scouts going to badges as lone scouts um, because of the distancing requirements. Uh, It becomes difficult for all of the ranges, the climbing tower, the waterfront, and really all of the areas. Trying to teach a cooking merit badge becomes difficult when the scouts can't collaborate when they all have to be uh, six feet apart. Um, This right here is what a fantastic group of sub cohorts might look like from a unit. Uh, So obviously we have five sub cohorts of this unit, three groups of three, a group of five, and a group of four. So, you know, that these four scouts are all taking archery, cooking, and communications together, and they let us know that their alternate is canoeing. Great. Um, so what we can do is while well, these groups, this group of four, this group of five, and these groups of three all have to stick with each other, 
we can combine. So look at period two, we have nine scouts in swimming, which works out incredibly well uh, because that'll allow them to be one single class rather than having to combine with another sub cohort, which really wouldn't be problematic if it's just one or two other sub cohorts. Um, and then cooking is all one class and that way they'll be able to make their meals for cooking merit badge together. Um, same thing with first aid over here. These three scouts, or these five scouts, will join up with these three scouts, period C. Um, and that is after they've joined up with different scouts for period B. So it really works out quite well. Um, the scouts have the freedom of choice within these of their first, second, and third choice badges within these really small groups of three scouts. Uh, which we would hope they can find some agreement among them. Because a lot of them, a lot of scouts we have found in the past go to merit badges with their friends anyway. And we think this limit of three will provide them that freedom to go with their friends, pick three badges, and go do what they have to do. Uh, with obviously the lone scout exception for those that just cannot fit into this model. Um, but once again, you know, if three groups want to do swimming, try to get them into the same period rather than staggered throughout the day. Free time. It's still free. The scouts do have to remain by the cohort, but they can really break up as they please. We still ask them to remain in at least groups of three, four, five, just so that we don't have scouts roaming around independently. But that's really no different than the buddy system we've used for years. We just want to do buddy plus where it's three or four or five scouts at once. Um, all areas will be offering free time program. Um, free times will be uh, announced at lunch as always. And some areas might be slightly more space or time limited like the shooting ranges. Um, something I didn't mention here is that we will be for contact tracing purposes having scouts sign in and out of areas that they go to. Um, and should they wanna take those badges, you know, fingerprinting or mammal studies, what have you, they will have to sign up in advance if at all possible. Miscellaneous, some things will automatically go on everybody's schedule. There's, this is no change. Chapels, campfires, et cetera. We're gonna ask everyone to hand sanitize between activities in badges, or at larger camp activities, we'll be doing a minimum of six feet between sub cohorts and cohorts. So in a badge, six feet between cohorts. At a campfire, at least six feet between cohorts. No parents night. Um, and scouts are going to be asked to bring a backpack with a small mess kit and a folder. The mess kit, why are we doing that? Uh, partially, it's because we wanna limit the number of any kind of shared utensils um, and, or uh, cooking items. Um, obviously we'll use camp cooking items, um, but then also it's for, to help us save the world. Uh, in most years we would use disposable plates in the areas. However, now we're going to most likely be using disposable plates, cups, cutlery, et cetera, at every single meal for every single person in camp. And that's absolutely what we have to do and it's absolutely right. But because all of the afternoon uh, cooking options are just that options, we're gonna ask scouts to bring a small mess kit that if they want to, you know, drink the cocoa at Scout Craft or have a hobo pie at Brown Sea, that they use their own plate or large mouth mug or whatever it is. Um, I will send out some examples soon. And obviously if a scout forgets or doesn't bring it, we will have options for them. Um, and a folder, we are going to distribute everyone's schedules to them Sunday. So we ask that the scouts keep those so that they know you know not only what their badges are, but also that Monday at 3 p.m. they have fingerprinting and then Tuesday at 3 they're going on the Sunset Summit and we're just going to let everybody know in advance what their schedules are. Um, and then also obviously this year 
hand sanitizer. If they have extra masks, they should bring them. A week in one masks is going to be uh, a little smelly by the end of the week in the hot of the summer. Yeah, so please make sure to bring all those things. Uh, questions and answers. If you need, if you have questions and want answers, reach out, reach out to myself or program director uh, Rachel Zelli. Uh, and you can also send any questions to info at camponoxid.org. Um, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, I once again I apologize for the change, and I thank you for being flexible with us. But we really do think this is going to be the best model that'll keep the most people happy. Um, thank you so much.